What's up guys, before we dive into the first video of my exciting Venezuela series, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, which is Ren. They have helped me offset the carbon footprint for my flights to Venezuela by planting trees in Tanzania. It is a very simple way to do something about the climate crisis and Ren has agreed to protect five acres of rainforest for everyone who signs up using the link in the description below. And with that being said, let's jump into today's story and watch to the end because it gets pretty crazy. Bienvenidos and welcome to Venezuela, my 194th country and final country in South America. Hang tight guys because I have amazing content coming your way. Words simply cannot describe the feeling of being in Venezuela right now. It was the single hardest visa I've ever had to get. I got it pre-COVID back in February of 2020 at the Venezuelan embassy in Manila. I had to go back and forth there like six different times over four weeks and meet with the ambassador and convince him that I'm a good person and that I'm okay to come to Venezuela and make awesome stories. And they finally granted me the visa. I got the visa. The only problem is it expires next month and the country just opened up. So I am one of the first official visitors, foreigners or locals to be in Venezuela right now since the country opened up. But if I'm being completely honest with you, I am pretty nervous to be here, to be shooting videos. It's a different kind of nervous than being in Somalia or Libya or Afghanistan. There, I have to worry about getting kidnapped or bombed or, or being a victim in a terrorist attack. But here in Venezuela, I have to worry about petty crime and theft and also the police. I gotta be really careful, I gotta keep a low profile, and I'm gonna do my best to get the stories that I wanna get um, while enjoying this beautiful country which I've heard so much about. Okay, let's back up a little bit. As you guys know, I'm in the middle of shooting a docu-series about visiting every country, but I had to leave my camera crew behind in Ecuador because they weren't able to secure their visas in time. Chris and Gray. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'll do my best to get all the footage I can and we'll be in touch, hopefully. I was forced to hire a local camera crew in Venezuela last minute, but I'm still responsible for shooting, directing, and managing all of the audio. It's a hell of a lot of work, but I was up for the challenge. So there I stood in the Guayaquil airport with a bag full of new Sony gear, realizing that I was about to embark on one of the craziest adventures of my life. Pretty nervous. Um kind of going on a whim. I don't know what to expect. I'm gonna be meeting my buddy Emmanuel, putting my full trust in him to take me around and show me a good time. So I'm really excited to finally check this one off the list. I know it's uh, not the best of times for the country, but I'm looking forward to making some good stories and uh, trying to tell amazing messages about the people and culture of Venezuela. So off we go now, boarding my flight to Caracas. Go to us. And we're off. I flew from Ecuador to Panama and then from Panama to the Dominican Republic because that was the only way that I could fly to my final destination, Caracas. Oh my god, I'm going to Venezuela. How are you? Awesome, bro. Yeah, I made it. How are you? That was tough in the airport, but I made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Venezuela, bienvenido. Yes. Oh my god, I finally made it to Venezuela. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. I did not think I was gonna make it here. Yeah, you did it. With COVID and with like all this shit happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm very, very excited to show you my country, so. Yeah, I'm so excited. Let's begin man. this trip. But I arrived last night when it was dark outside and I just woke up to these insane views at Emmanuel's place. Look at this. Woo! All right, well, day one in Caracas. Emmanuel on the wheel. What's up, my friend? Time to explore this beautiful city. Right now I see these big green hills and uh, I am just so freaking excited to explore this country. It's been on my list for how many years now? and uh, the time has finally come. Do you know what's crazy to think right now? I am like one of the only tourists right now in the whole country because my flight was all Venezuelans. Did you know that? There was like no tourists on my flight. The government only opened the country uh, 
two weeks ago for people coming from Iran. No one is coming from Iran, just the cash. <laughs> Uh, Turkey, same story. Dominican Republic, one way to Venezuelans that go to Miami, yes. it comes back, comes yes. by, and also Panama and Mexico because it's the only president in all Latin America that support him. I think it is pretty safe to say that Venezuela is not your average tourist destination, at least not over the last 10 or so years. Once upon a time, this country was one of the richest and most prosperous countries in the entire world, and now it debatably has the worst economy that any country has ever seen throughout the history of mankind. A series of poor decisions by the people in charge over the last half decade has caused problem after problem after problem for the Venezuelan economy. Massive hyperinflation has caused the Venezuelan currency to essentially be worthless. As I make this video, one US dollars is 1.4 million bolivares. If it continues inflating at this rate, that amount will be double in the next 94 days. This doesn't mean anything right now. Anything. 500 bolivares is this. And 500 bolivares yeah. before they take out five zeros. In some ways, the capital city of Caracas feels like anarchy. You can literally drive as fast as you want and run red lights in front of policemen and they won't do anything. Why did you run the red light? <laughs> because no one respects the lights. A few years ago, there was a really danger on stopping in red lights yeah. because you may get robbed. Like always when I pass red light, I just watch yeah. to the other side. Dude. Just just like if it, wa if it was a stop, not a red light. According to a variety of sources, this city of 5 million people has the highest murder rate per capita in the world, but the edginess of Caracas makes me that much more excited to explore. You really gotta know where you're going in this city, otherwise you could get in the wrong corner, or maybe with the wrong people, and no bueno. My local buddy Emmanuel, who I've been in touch with on Instagram for over a year and fellow content creator, will be by my side the entire trip, giving me a grand tour of his beloved nation. Look at that. You have a really nice view of what a barrio is. I was thrown right into the chaos when it was time to fill up our gas tank. At that very moment, on my first morning in Caracas, it started to sink in that I was actually in Venezuela. Right now we're filling up the car with gasoline. And it's quite an interesting experience. It blows my mind that Venezuela has so much oil, yet it's so difficult to find gas right now and to fill up your car. There's no cars on the street. Because of gasoline. That, that's an advantage for us. How long do you think those people have to wait in line? Five, six hours and in Caracas. But if you go outside, you could stay 15 days before you can uh, put gasoline again. They give you like a number and you have to go every day to gas station to see which number it goes into the line. So maybe 15 days without putting but free gasoline. It's, it's really incredible how you actually have free gas though. Because nobody else has free gasoline. I am not agree with that, but that was one of the main assets of the government to buy people's boat, you know? Like, okay, I'm gonna give you free gasoline okay. because we are the most uh, reserved, oil, right. oil reserve country in the world. You can read this. In Valencia, lines to put gasoline are four days. Otherwise, you have to buy it in the black market. That price is between two and three dollars per liter. Who told you that? A follower. Someone says, the lock is with you because we put gasoline super fast. If you are confused, don't worry because I will be doing a deep dive analysis on the oil and gas crisis in Venezuela in a separate video. This is only a teaser of what's to come. Trust me, as someone with an economics degree, my brain is literally exploding right now. The city is uh, like socially, let's say, uh, divided by west and east side. West is like the poor side and right now we're in the east part of the city where it's supposed to be the rich part or the high class but also there is some slums here. And you're born and raised in Krakow? Yeah, I, I, was, I was born in a really poor neighborhood because when I was a kid my dad was starting, you know. He moved from Portugal because of the Second World War my grandpa didn't want uh, his brothers to go into the war. There was spreading uh, news in, in Europe that 
it was a Caribbean country with plenty of opportunities, etc., etc. So they came in a in a big uh, boat, like for three days. My dad moved to Venezuela when he was eight. Uh, then he started like fisherman, then started working in a meat store. Hearing Emmanuel's background made me realize how diverse his country is. I came to find out that over two thirds of the population are mestizos, meaning they have mixed European ancestry. In any regard, there's too much talking and too little eating going on. Emmanuel and his girlfriend Valerie took me to get one of the best meals in town. We come to La Union, one specific place to eat cachapas, one of our main dishes here in Venezuela. Dos mixtas medianas, una jarra grande, ahí sí tienes cambio, ¿verdad? I was trying to, to figure out how to make a round number because they don't have to exchange in the small bills. So I was adding like 10, 10, 11 and try to make 35 exact dollars. What did, we, what did you order? I ordered cachapa. There is like a traditional dish made out of corn. They blend corn with milk and some other stuff and they put it on the grill and then you put uh, Venezuelan cheese inside and close it. What is Venezuelan cheese? It's the best cheese in the world. What kind of juice is that? Parchita. What, what fruit is it? You try it and you figure out. <laughs> it's like a slushy, like, it's like blended ice mixed with passion fruit. It's so delicious. When I've had passion fruit juice in other countries, it's not this fresh. This is the fresh one, man. Excelente. They just served the cachapa here, which from first impression looks like a big looks like a big pancake with all this I don't even know what this is. Cheese, pork, yeah, all this delicious stuff inside. How do I eat it? Like a taco? No. Oh you cut well, it yeah. with a with a knife. Everything in one bite? Yeah, everything in one bite. <laughs> Are you so happy to watch me try this right now? Yeah bro, we're super excited about your impression. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. The pork is delicious. It's perfectly soft, and this cheese—you were—you were right about the cheese. Incredible. How is it, bro? Tell me how it is. Amazing, bro. Look I'm that. amazing. Look at cheese. Oh. Look, look at that. Se combina con tomate y le puedes agregar también otras salsas, pero esto es una delicia. From 1 to 10, how good is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> First meal here in Venezuela, it was amazing. I don't even know what it's called. What's it called again? Cachapa. Cachapas. Oh my god, it was delicious. And now we are about to hit the streets of Caracas. I don't really know what to expect, but I know it's going to be incredible. As long as Emmanuel is with me, I'm safe. <laughs> Which place are we going to visit first? You can, you can see their images of Che Guevara, yeah. that our president was a fan of, yeah. and Chavez, and Maduro is the small one, and Fidel Castro also. We proceeded to drive around Caracas, and it is enormous. So many different neighborhoods, so many markets, funky architecture, incredible viewpoints, and a culture that was very inviting to learn more about. <laughs> So baseball is the national sport of Venezuela. Yes. And we yes. were just driving on the street and we found like a baseball game. Just like a bunch of dudes just hanging out playing baseball. Yeah, just hanging out. And that guy was pretty oh, good. Oh, they just hit that ball. Almost like, home run. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, very good. Win. Nice to capture in the moment. There are many Venezuelans in the MLB like Miguel Cabrera and yeah, yeah. Ronnie, Ronnie Cedeño. Yes, Cedeño, Wilson Contreras. Yeah. It's awesome, man. Venezuela is a hot spot for baseball. Our final stop of the day was one of the main plazas, which was a lot fancier than I ever expected. We've made it to a beautiful little plaza here with a wonderful monument with the Venezuela colors on it. Nice apartment buildings around here. Uh, there's a fountain behind me that's not currently working, but it's just a really, really nice place to hang out and kind of see a side of Caracas that maybe me and you didn't know existed. We're now in Plaza Francia or France Square in Altamira, one of the nicest places of Caracas. 
You can come here, you just sit around the square. You also have access to the subway. It feels like a perfectly safe, normal life here in, in this part. In this part of the city, yeah, you have also, you have a lot of police around, national guards and everything. Yeah, yeah, in this part of the city, Wait, you're very safe. Emmanuel, it's been an awesome first day here in Caracas. Did you have fun? You yes, Dude, of course. This place is electric, man. Like, yeah. brutal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what are we doing over the next week, bro? Where are we going? We're visiting Choroní and Chuao that are one of the nicest beaches in Venezuela that you can get by car or yeah. just small uh, tripping boat. Right. Uh, after that, we're trying to go to fish with the fishermen in town. We're enjoying tambor, that is a typical music in the town. You Amazing. will enjoy a lot. And after that, we're going to Morrocoy. I could say the best beaches of the country. There's a lot I want to see. I know that this guy's taking care of me. I don't even know what Morrocoy means. I never looked it up on the internet, but I know it's going to be amazing. Thank you, bro. Thank can't, you. can't wait to see more of your country, man. Awesome. Hasta awesome. luego. Yeah, Peace. let's do this. I just want to take a second again to thank Ren, who is the sponsor of this video. Ren is a company that helps you understand how much greenhouse gases you're emitting into the environment, whether it's through flying or driving or even eating, and they help you offset that damage. So basically within minutes, I was able to offset all the carbon footprint for my flights to Venezuela. It was that easy. The truth is that I've become increasingly alarmed with the looming climate crisis and together we have a responsibility to educate ourselves and help fight against it so that the world can be a more pleasant place for generations to come. Given the amount of times that I fly every year, I've been looking to find an easy way to give back to the environment and Ren has been the answer for me. By answering a few questions about your lifestyle on their built-in calculator, you can see what your carbon footprint is and how you can reduce it. And because it's almost impossible to reduce your carbon footprint to zero, you have the option to offset what you have left by planting trees and protecting rainforests in countries like Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, and the UK. For insanely busy working people like myself, I don't have the time or energy to plant trees every time I fly or drive or consume something, so I can just pay a reasonable amount to rent and they can have it all taken care of. It's quick and easy and I've actually pledged to uh, have rent offset all of my life emissions for the future. As a bonus, Ren has agreed to protect five acres of rainforest for everyone who signs up using the link in the description below. Every time you contribute to offset your carbon footprint, you will be receiving an email with an update about the actual forest that you are saving. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next nine videos in this epic Venezuela series. I can't wait. Peace. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world.